Okay, good evening, folks. Dr. Freedom here with you. And, oh, man, I've been feeling really like, you know, a little bit of a heel, you know. I like to, I would normally consistently day-to-day, -day, you know, do news videos, but things happen. But, you know, you got to deal with life as it comes. But let's get off that. Let's get right into the news. Let's take a look at what I do have for you tonight. And here we go. Let's jump right off into it. Okay, first off, we have the Christmas special press reaction. And once again, this is uh, over here on Doctor Who News. They've gathered up some summaries of, you know, various media outlets, having a little talk about, you know, what went on, you know, how they, you know, their take on the Christmas special, The Husband's a River Song. And <clears throat> what I'm loving right here is 411 Mania was pleased the story had moved away from the overtly Christmas specials of the past. And that was one thing I loved about this. AV Club felt the structure was a bit odd. <laughs> TV.com had mixed feelings over the meeting between the River and the 12th Doctor. Uh, Wales Online loved the pairing, as was the Radio Times. The Metro called it a bittersweet rom-com. And The Guardian, you know, well, The Guardian's The Guardian. And there's a little thing about The Express. If you want to go take a look at all these, boom, here they are. And all the links you need right here, I believe yeah, they'll take you straight to the article that you're looking for. If you want to go check out, you know, the full article on what these particular, you know, sets of guys said. Okay, well, guys or girls, you, know, you never know. Moving on, let's go on. Husbands of River Song, overnight viewing figures. Now, keep in mind, these are the preview, oh, the unofficial overnights. <laughs> Sorry, my throat's a bit dry. I'm waiting for the coffee to make in the next room. Okay, 5.77 million viewers have watched Christmas special, and it had a 29.4% share of the audience. Woo, doggy. Most watched program on Christmas Day was the final installment of Downton Abbey with 6.9 million. So you can see the numbers were down for all of the shows. Okay, matter of fact, let's bring this up real quick. The highest rated was 7 million. That was Downton Abbey. You know, even Strictly Come Butt Licking went downhill. Mrs. Brown's Boy is down to 6.4. But you got to remember, it's Christmas. Come on. People are going to be wanting out there, you know, spending time with their families and whatnot. And, but, you know, then again, Doctor Who has become a yearly event on Christmas Day. So sometimes it just takes a little while, you know, to get around to watching it later on. Okay, Australian Overnights, uh, of course, Husbands of, River, Husbands of River Song came with 575,000 viewers in the five major cities. Highest rated ABC drama of the day, 10th highest rating program of the day overall. Keep moving on. Final Series 9 ratings from the Space Channel. Get ready for this. Space Channel, which is the Canadian broadcaster of Doctor Who, has given the Doctor has given Doctor Who News an update on the final ratings for Series Nine. Oh man, I feel like my voice coming out. It's been a really weird week here, weather-wise. Okay, Space Channel. All right, we gave it. Here we go. Doctor Who remains the most watched program on space, with an average of six hundred and ninety-six thousand five hundred viewers for Series Nine. Series Nine is also the most watched season of the series to date, and the key demos of ages 25 to 54, ages 18 to 49, and then we are going to go right into those anyway because, you know, I ain't going to get that specific. So while Doctors remain their most watched program, the average viewership has gone down over the final few episodes. Now, the Doctor News, in November, Doctor News reported that an average of 731,000 people watched per episode. All ratings, once again, only cover traditional television viewers, and it doesn't include PVR, you know, or what you call it, or people watching various, you know, apps, such as iTunes and whatnot. But the thing is, remember, a lot more people are watching Doctor Who online than they have been before. Okay, 10 best moments from the Hose of River song. I'm going to leave this one for you. All right, we'll jump real quick. The titles, if you didn't watch the titles, they were awesome. You know, watch them again. Watch them real close. I love that Christmassy feel they did give the titles. Greg Davies, of course, Matt Lucas. Uh, and, the, you know, the ending, you know, they both lived happily ever after. And I love the, you know, Peter Capaldi saying of, you know, his quote unquote first time <clears throat> getting a look at, you know, doing the TARDIS speech. Oh, it's bigger than the inside. My knowledge. Oh, we won't go in it. River finally recognizes the doctor. Hello, sweetie. I love that. Um, of course, <clears throat> Murray Gold's music, singing Towers of Delirium. Delirium. And, I, you know, once again, we knew this was coming for a long time, you know. Moffat's been wanting to do this for a while, so it's not a big surprise. So if any of you are out there, we're going, you know, come on, they're going to do it. Yeah, come on, we all knew they were. The Doctor and River song, of course, 
both phenomenal. Capaldi and Kingston bounced off each other so well on this episode. It was amazing. This is better than most of the Christmas specials I've seen in the New Who era. And one of these days, I'm going to have to sit down and take a look at them all again. That's why I don't want to make, you know, say it's the best. You know, I want to sit back, you know, maybe, you know, do a little touch up, you know, a little bit of rebooting on the memory. Maybe take a look over, you know, at some of the other ones again. But this one was phenomenal. Okay, moving on, Dr. Who's Life and Times, a river song to date. And once again, I don't know why, as the doctor said, people need a flow chart. They, I don't know why they feel they need to try to figure out her timeline backward to forward and whatnot. But, you know, we pretty much know where she winds up. It's a given, okay? She's going to the library. All right, moving on. Heartbreaking Dr. Christmas special leaves Santa fans in tears with emotional surprise. Goodbye. <clears throat> okay, tonight's episode, you know, the doctor seemed spent what he seemed to know was his last night with River Song. Now, while he didn't confirm to the unsuspecting TARDIS pilot that they could never see each other again, it didn't take her long to realize what was going on, especially after she caught him with the you know, with a tear. And then, you know, that nice little scene right there. You know, they just basically go over that again. So nothing big there in the metro and in the mirror, I mean. Okay, this has been floating around for a few days now, and I thought I'd take a look at this. Uh, Steve Moffat actively engaged in search for a new Doctor Who showrunner. Now, for all you Moffat haters out there, please don't go, you know, popping the streamers, you know, putting up the bunting and firing off the fireworks just yet. Wait till, you know, New Year's Day. Save them for that. But he's been doing this for a while, I think. Um, there was word going around that the reason why the Christmas special was written the way it was this year sorry, my throat's drying out on me and I should have hit the coffee before I did this, was this? he thought this was going to be his last year. But, of course, as we all know, he has signed on for Series 10. Please don't ask me when they're going to be filming it as I'm still hearing that crap about, you know, Michael Bigwold said they're starting in May of 2016. He never said that. That was the guys who were on that podcast came up with that bit of speculation. All right but I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, you never know. All right, moving on. So, you know, this is not nothing to jump up and panic about if you love the era of Steve Moffat. I think he's going to give it one more year, to be honest, because, you know, even with the best of things, you tend to burn out. All right, Sonic Screwdriver app, <laughs> pretty self-explanatory. It's on the App Store and Google Play if you want to do a little virtual Sonic Screwdriver on your various smartphones. And, okay, this one I want you to read. Now, I'm going to have not – I'm trying to keep the time down on the news report, but. BBC offers Indies a chance to make Strictly Come Dancing and Doctor Who. Now, the reason being, all right, Corporation agrees to allow independent studios the opportunity to pitch to make 40% of the in-house shows by 2018. Now, one of the reasons they may be doing this is because, remember, there's a whole, the BBC charter is, you know, doing weird things. Plus, they just passed that legislation where, if I remember right, citizens over the age of 75 in the UK no longer have to pay a TV license. And... They're, you know, they're looking at some more major budget cuts more than likely you know, coming further down the line. And I think what it is, they're going to, you know, don't worry, the BBC will still own said programs, but they're going to say, look, you know, do we want to contract it out? And that's, you know, you might want to, you know, think about it. But at the same time, you know, they kind of did the same thing with Ripper Street where they let Amazon Prime make it. Amazon Prime uh, gets the air at first, and then it airs a few months later on the BBC. And from what I've seen, the quality on Ripper Street has not decreased. They brought on the whole team from that show. So it's nothing to panic about yet, but you may want to take a look at this and ponder it for the future. So that's why I'm going to include this one here. I've been sitting on it for a few days, and I've been meaning to do another video a lot you know, sooner than this, but you know, I've been really, really busy taking care of Lady G and whatnot. Okay, so... Um, once again, Series 10 is up in the air. I have not heard anything further about what's going to go out going on with the filming of Series 10. I'm assuming it's going to be sooner than May because that just doesn't sound right. Because even if they want to get a half a series in, you know, how could they start it in May and then, you know, have it, you know, even a few episodes filmed, ran through post-production, put together and shot out just, you know, even get a handful in by the end of the year. So I don't know. And also keep in mind, both Capaldi and, you know, Capaldi has said he was not contracted to do a shorter season. He's contracted to do a full one. 
and that's what he plans on doing. And I think even uh, Moffat said it's hogwash, but always remember, rule number one is the doctor lies. Rule number zero, the moth lies. So keep it in mind. Well, guys, until next time, take care. ta -ta, Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to get on out of here. So see you later. See you on the flip side. And if I don't see you before then, Happy New Year, folks.